Karen Carpenter's unforgettable voice won over a generation. Her warm and deep voice left a lasting impression on the music industry, but what struggles did she encounter in her personal life outside of the limelight? Facts First presents Karen Carpenter's final days were sad, her brother reveals the truth. A life worth celebrating. Karen Carpenter's tale, a blend of victories and challenges, starts in the idyllic backdrop of New Haven, Connecticut, where she entered the world on March 2, 1950. Her family's move to Downey, California marked the prelude to a musical journey that would captivate the world. Young Karen, initially drawn to the drums, emerged as a pioneering female drummer in an era where this was a rarity, but it was her velvety voice that became her hallmark. The Carpenters, formed in 1969 with her brother Richard, soared to fame with their debut album, Offering. But it was their re-release of the song Ticket to Ride from this album that first charted, hinting at the success to come. Their subsequent album, Close to You, released in 1970, became a sensation. The title track and We've Only Just Begun turned into iconic hits. The early 70s saw a cascade of hits from the Carpenters. Superstar, released in 1971, showcased Karen's emotional depth, while Rainy Days and Mondays and Top of the World became anthems of the heart. Their music was a comforting constant on the radio, in homes, and in the hearts of many, with Karen's voice acting as a soothing balm in turbulent times. Her television appearances alongside Richard further cemented their status as household names. Their 1971 appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show and their own variety show, Make Your Own Kind of Music, displayed Karen's multi-talented persona, comfortable both behind the drum kit and as a lead vocalist. The Carpenters' Christmas specials, particularly The Carpenters at Christmas, 1977, became seasonal favorites, showcasing their ability to blend holiday cheer with their unique sound. In 1973, The Carpenters released Now and Then, featuring a sidelong medley of oldies that highlighted Karen's versatility. The album's single, Yesterday Once More, became a nostalgic anthem, further proving their musical mastery. Their 1975 hit, Only Yesterday, from the album Horizon, reflected a more mature sound, resonating with an audience growing alongside them. Despite these successes, Karen's personal life was increasingly challenging. The relentless pressures of fame and her personal struggle with an eating disorder became a silent symphony playing in the background. This period saw fewer public appearances and a focus on recovery. But her resilience shone through in her return to the public eye. Her final public appearance in January of 1983 served as a touching reminder of her unwavering spirit. Despite her challenges, she persisted in performing with the grace and professionalism that had consistently defined her career. This final act, though shadowed by personal challenges, was a testament to her dedication to her art and fans. Karen's Heartbreaking Final Days Please be advised the following segment of the video discusses topics related to eating disorders, specifically anorexia. This content may be distressing for some viewers. Karen Carpenter's journey through her final days is a complex and deeply moving story, marked by her struggle with anorexia, a condition not well understood at the time, and a series of personal and professional challenges that added layers of difficulty to her life. From the outset, Karen's battle with weight and self-image was evident. She began dieting after high school, feeling pressure to achieve a certain image, especially in the public eye. Initially, she hired a personal trainer who put her on a high-carb diet, leading to weight gain, which she found unacceptable. Karen then took matters into her own hands, embarking on a calorie-restricted diet and engaging in rigorous physical activity. This approach led to drastic weight loss that started to concern those around her. By 1975, at the height of the carpenter's success, Karen's weight had dropped to a dangerous 90 pounds. The physical toll of her condition was becoming increasingly apparent, with Karen collapsing on stage, leading to the cancellation of tours. Her condition was further exacerbated by her use of laxatives and thyroid medication to control her weight despite her thyroid being normal. Her personal life was equally turbulent. Her marriage to Thomas James Burris in 1980, which ended in divorce after 14 months, added to her emotional distress. Burris had undergone a vasectomy, unbeknownst to Karen, who wanted children. This revelation, combined with the perceived motive behind their marriage, left her heartbroken and disillusioned. Professionally, she faced setbacks too. 
Her attempt to release a solo album in 1979 was met with rejection, leading to the cancellation of the project. This was a significant blow to her as she had invested a considerable amount of her own money into it. In the early 80s, Karen's condition reached its peak. She decided to seek treatment in New York where she spent nearly a year. During this time, she made startling confessions to her therapist about the extent of her efforts to control her weight, including taking excessive amounts of laxatives and thyroid medication. She managed to gain some weight during this period, but cut her treatment short, returning to L.A. just in time for Thanksgiving. Despite appearing to be on the mend and making plans for future tours, Karen's health was still fragile. Her final public appearance was at a gathering of past Grammy Award winners in January of 83, where she appeared frail but upbeat, expressing optimism about her future. Tragically, on February 4, 1983, Karen was found unresponsive at her parents' home. Despite efforts to save her, she passed away at the hospital, with the autopsy revealing the cause of death as emetine cardiotoxicity due to her eating disorder. Her heart had been severely compromised by her prolonged struggle with anorexia. Richard Carpenter Today Following Karen's untimely departure, Richard has been steadfast in honoring the musical heritage they created as the Carpenters. His life has intertwined the joys of family and continuation of their musical legacy. Richard found love with Mary Rudolph, his adopted cousin, and together they have nurtured a family of five children. Their union, which began in the 70s and culminated in marriage shortly after Karen's passing, has been a cornerstone of his life. Their children, each a reflection of their parents' love and dedication, have grown up immersed in the musical world their father helped pioneer. His commitment to preserving the Carpenter's legacy extends beyond his family life. He's played a pivotal role in the creation of Carpenter's The Musical Legacy, a book that delves into their journey as a celebrated musical duo. The work not only highlights their achievements, but also pays homage to Karen's indispensable role in their success. Now it's time to hear from you. What part of Karen Carpenter's journey resonates with you the most? Let us know in the comments section below.